So now Peter is beginning to question whether or not what the storyteller told him was correct. And he's beginning to get worried because even though he knows that the elephant exists, he has not been able to find the elephant and he's trapped in that attic apartment with Vilna Lutz. So I'm wondering if there's been a character we have met so far that could help him. So where could he turn for some guidance? So let's look at chapter five and see what comes of this next situation. And I believe we're gonna meet another character today. All right, so let's pay attention to chapter five. The people of the city of Baltice became obsessed with the elephant in the market square and in the ballrooms, in the stables and in the gaming houses, in the churches and in the squares. It was the elephant, the elephant that came through the roof, the elephant conjured by the magician, the elephant that crippled the noblewoman. The bakers of the cities concocted a flat oversized pastry and filled it with cream and sprinkled it with cinnamon and sugar and called the confection an elephant's ear. And the people could not get enough of it. The street vendors sold for exorbitant prices chunks of plaster that had fallen onto the stage when the elephant made her dramatic appearance. Cataclysm, the vendors shouted. Mayhem possesses the plaster of disaster. The puppet show in the public gardens featured elephants that came crashing onto the stage, crushing the other puppets beneath them, making the young children laugh and clap in delight and recognition. From the pulpits of the churches, the preachers spoke about divine intervention, the surprises of fate, the wages of sin and the dire consequences of magic gone afoul. The elephant's dramatic and unexpected appearance changed the way the people of the city of Baltis spoke. If, for instance, a person was deeply surprised or moved, he or she would say, I was, you understand, in the presence of an elephant. As for the fortune tellers of the city, they were kept particularly busy. They gazed into their teacups and crystal balls. They read the palms of thousands of hands. They studied the cards and cleared their throats and predicted that amazing things were yet to come. If elephants could arrive without warning, then a dramatic shift had certainly occurred in the universe. The stars were aligning themselves for something even more spectacular. Rest assured, rest assured. Meanwhile, in the dance halls and in the ballrooms, the men and the women of the city, the low and the high, danced the same dance, a swaying, lumbering, two-step called, of course, the elephant. Everywhere, always, it was the elephant the elephant, the magician's elephant. It is absolutely ruining the social season, said the Countess Quintet to her husband. It is all people will speak of. Why, it is as bad as a war. Actually, it is worse. At least with a war, there are well-dressed heroes capable of making interesting conversation. But what do we have here? Nothing, nothing but a smelly, loathsome beast. And yet people will insist on speaking of nothing else. I truly feel I am quite certain. I am absolutely convinced that I will lose my mind if I hear the word elephant one more time. Elephant, muttered the Count. What did you say? said the Countess. She whirled around and stared at her husband. Nothing, said the Count. Something must be done, said the Countess. Indeed, said the Count Quintet. And who will do it? I beg your pardon. The Count cleared his throat. I only wanted to say, my dear, that you must admit that what occurred was indeed truly extraordinary. Why must I admit it? What was extraordinary about it? 
the countess had not been present at the opera house that fateful evening and so she had missed the cataclysmic event and the countess was the kind of person who hated most horribly to miss cataclysmic events well you see began the count quintet i do not see said the countess and you will not make me see yes said her husband i suppose that much is true unlike his wife the count had been in attendance at the theatre that night he had been seated so close to the stage that he had felt the rush of displaced air that presaged the elephant's appearance there must be a way to wrest control of the situation said the countess quintet she paced back and forth there must be some way to regain the social season the count closed his eyes he felt again the breeze of the elephant's arrival the whole thing had happened in an instant but it had also occurred so slowly he who never cried had cried that night because it was as if the elephant had spoken to him and said things are not at all what they seem to be oh no not at all to be in the presence of such a thing to feel such a feeling count quintet opened his eyes my dear he said i have the solution you do said the countess yes and what exactly would the solution be if everyone speaks of nothing but the elephant and if you desire to be the center the heart of the social season then you must be the one with the thing that everyone speaks of but what can you mean said the countess her lip quivered whatever could you mean what i mean my dear is that you must bring the magician's elephant here when the countess demanded the univ of the universe that it move in a certain way the universe trembling and eager to please did as she bade it to do and so in the matter of the elephant and the countess this is how it happened at her home sorry this is how it unfolded there was not at her home as lavish and well appointed a home as it was a door large enough for an elephant to walk through the countess quintet hired a dozen craftsmen the men worked around the clock with and within a day's time a wall was knocked down an enormous brightly painted handsomely decorated door was installed the elephant was summoned and arrived under the cover of night escorted by the captain of police who ushered her through the door that had been constructed expressly for her then relieved beyond all measure to have do be done with the affair he tipped his hat to the countess and left the door was closed and locked behind him and the elephant became the property of the countess quintet who had paid the owner of the opera house money sufficient to repair and retile the whole of his roof a dozen times over the elephant belonged entirely to the countess quintet who had written to madame levon and expressed at great length and with utmost eloquence her sorrow over the unspeakable and inexplicable tragedy that had befallen the noble woman she offered madame levon her full and enthusiastic support in the further prosecution and punishment of the magician the fate of the elephant rested absolutely in the hands of the countess quintet who had made a very generous contribution indeed to the policeman's fund the elephant you will now understand belonged lock stock and barrel to the countess the beast was installed in the ballroom and the ladies and gentlemen dukes and duchesses princesses princes and princesses 
counts and countesses flocked to her. They gathered around her. The elephant became quite literally the center of the social season. All right, so now we do have a new character. We have the Countess Quintet. Now she was not there the night that the elephant appeared, but she has made a very important impact to the elephant and by extension to Peter Duquesne. All right, so think about these and think about how Peter could possibly still find the elephant now that the elephant was on display in the Countess's home. We'll have chapter six tomorrow.